Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews on How To, and today I'm going to update you on my build in the Sharkoon TG5 Pro. Keep watching to find out more. Okay, so this is an update on the TG5 Pro from Sharkoon. I've got to be honest, straight out of the gate, I'm quite impressed. It's a really nice case, really easy to work with, and I haven't found any real major issues. One issue that I did find, which isn't a major one, which I resolved pretty easily, was the fans on the front. I did find with the fans in their standard mounted position, which is actually in front of the frame, it's too close to this glass front panel and it does choke off the system quite a lot, about eight degrees higher than it would normally be. I have moved the fans behind the mounting grill and that has improved things drastically. The airflow is much, much improved. Other than that, pretty much it's all good. So I'll go through the case, go through my build, show you inside and show you my wiring, etc. so you can get an idea of what you can achieve in your own builds. Talk about the temperatures and then uh, wrap up with my final thoughts. Okay, so with the side panel off and with the lights on, you can get a better look of what is going on. Now, when the system first starts up, because of how the Gigabyte motherboard works, you just get the standard RGB effect or the default lighting. As soon as it gets into Windows and the software kicks in, then the lights will start changing and go into either Unicorn Puke or whatever mode you've actually chosen. Bang on cue. Okay, so looking at the build, so what have we got? So we've got a Thermaltake Contact 12 cooler, which is a 120mm tower cooler. We've got, behind that, we've got a Ryzen 5 2600 with a very slight overclock, and it's running about 3.750 megahertz on all cores. We've also got some V-Color RAM, DDR4-3200. There is a Gigabyte RX 570 in there also, and it's all running on the Gigabyte B450 Elite. The case itself is handled all this absolutely fine. This is a really nice case to work in, as I kind of alluded to in the earlier review. Lots and lots of room for everything. The cable cutouts are pretty much all in the right places. The only one which I was slightly disappointed about is not being one in the far bottom corner for the HD audio connection, but I've managed to stretch it across from the outlet at the bottom across to the side with no issues at all. Also, I found that the outlet at the bottom was actually the perfect place for the PCI Express graphics connector, which has come out and is almost completely vertical, so it kind of blends in quite nicely. The rest of the cabling, the top mount for the extra CPU power, really easy to get through, really nice big opening there to pass the cables through. And we've also got the wiring going through from our RGB fan at the back, so again, no uh, problems there. There's a cutout at the top here, which is really good for putting through the wiring for the fans and the RGB, which is all connected up nicely. And it's all in one area, so it keeps that wiring to a minimum. The pass-through channel here for the main ATX power connector has worked out really well. And some people would say they'd like to see grommets, but personally for me, this works absolutely fine. And grommets just add another complication and another cost to the case. Quite often I find with grommets, we push a cable through and the grommet pulls out anyway adding to the time that it takes to build a PC, and it just is a pain in the backside. Also, the grommets, after a while, the rubber deteriorates and they will eventually basically fall apart. So, personally, I'd rather not have them. Looking a little bit more closely into this front section, as you can see, I've got the fans mounted behind the actual panel there, rather than in front, which actually serves two purposes. First of which, increases the airflow quite dramatically because the actual fans are behind the level of the filtration on the side. So, rather than the air having to go in the side, then forward, then across, then back, in a kind of dog leg fashion. Now it can literally just go straight in and through in a 90 degree bend. One single 90 degree bend is much better than multiple 90 degree bends as you do lose air pressure every time you go through a change in course. Even with that said, with these fans mounted behind, we've still got plenty of room in the bottom here. So if we wanted to put a 360mm radiator in there, it can fit in there with ease no issues there so if you are concerned that maybe you want to have the fans but you also want to have a radiator there is enough room there so don't let that concern you when it came to the build itself i used a tc sunbow one terabyte drive which is an mvme so that's tucked in behind the graphics card again we've got plenty of airflow here so it wasn't an issue and even under kind of full load tests we were seeing around 53 degrees on the nvme drive which i think is absolutely fine and the drives are actually rated for considerably higher than that so no issues there again plenty of airflow running nice and cool. I did find some of the temperatures and I'm gonna to have to refer to my notes because unfortunately I did do lots of pictures and images and I was gonna make a nice shiny graph so you can all see the differences between the individual temperatures. But unfortunately I backed it up onto a Toshiba drive which I had a slight inkling was faulty. 
So yeah, that's another reason why I need to get my NAS set up quickly and uh, yeah, better sooner than later. I don't want to be going through data loss again. It is a real pain in the backside. Anyway, so with the system in its current configuration, so that's three 120s on the front, a single 120 on the rear, the 120 mil tower cooler, and obviously with the Ryzen 5 2600. I was using CPU Z as a stress test. I know it's not the best test and it doesn't generate the most heat, but it's actually quite a good representation of what system can go under, under most gaming loads, that kind of thing. So with all of the panels on and the front attached, we were looking at a temperature maximum of right 59 degrees C, which I actually think is absolutely fine. And when it was idle, we were around about 36, 37 degrees, which is in a 25 to 24 degree room, and at the moment it's really humid, so for me, around about eight degrees over ambient is absolutely fine under idling conditions. With the front panel off, we did manage to drop the temperatures a little bit, not as much as you'd think. So by taking the front panel off in its entirety and just complete airflow from those three 120 mil fans, we managed to drop it down to about 55 degrees C under full load, and this dropped down to around about 33, 34 degrees with in idle configuration. So I thought then I'll try it with the front panel on, but with the mesh filters in the sides, take those out and just have the front panel on just so there is a little bit of restriction. And the difference is minimal. It's about one or two degrees margin of error kind of stuff. So having the front panel on and the filtration on the insides is definitely beneficial. And realistically in this configuration with the fans behind the mountain, it's a four or five degree difference between them. So. For me, that's absolutely fine. I'd much rather have a slightly warmer system, but have it relatively dust free. One slight niggle I might have really is these drive mounting cages on the top for the SSDs or two and a half inch drives. I personally think they look a little bit messy. You can remove them, just take the screws out and remove the cages and there it gives you a slightly cleaner look on the bottom. You can, if you want to, you can mount these on the rear or just leave them in the box if you're not using them at all. Again, down to personal preference. If you are using this particular drive cage on the left-hand side as you're looking at it, there isn't actually a punch out behind there to actually feed the cable in through. So again, that is a, a little bit of a concern, but not the end of the world. There is a large opening there behind this one, so you can quite easily route the cables across. Again, for those that like to have a ultra immaculate build or super clean look, then again, that might be a slight concern. If you take out the other cage as well, it gives you a, a nice clean flat look. Again, you can see the holes where the cages are meant to be, but it certainly looks a little bit cleaner than it did previously. So overall, as far as I'm concerned, on this side of things, no issues, no problems whatsoever. I'm actually really glad they didn't choose to have a vertical GPU mounting area in this. There technically kind of is enough room in there, so potentially they could have put one in there, but I think it would have been way too close to the glass side panel and would have possibly choked graphics cards. So in my opinion, I'm glad they didn't try and add that. Okay, so moving around to the front, as you can see, got these amazing fans. I really do like these fans. Sharking really do seem to uh, pull out all the stops when it comes to their addressable RGB fans. They always look fantastic, whether it's uh, these ones, the sharp blades, whatever it is, they really do a fantastic job in my opinion. The colors show through really nicely and they do get off uh, an incredible amount of color. So as you can see, the downside being because they're mounted behind this frame, you do lose a little bit of the edges on there. But realistically, when you've got the front panel on, because there is a, about inch and a half, two inches worth of depth between the glass and the fans, it kind of disappears a little bit anyway. Moving back to the front panel, still, I don't get the orange glow on this panel. It's, uh, it's a very, very odd inclusion. Although, as you can see from some of the B-roll and from what you've possibly seen already from previous reviews, etc., with it being a very slight tint on there, or sepia tone, I suppose, it doesn't actually make any difference at all really when the lights are actually on, you don't really notice it. Unless you actually stop and stare and really analyze the difference between the front fans and the rest of the system, there's virtually nothing in it. So it's not the end of the world. I would have much, much preferred it to being crystal clear, um, to be completely honest. But again, it's, it's not the end of the world. Going back to what I was saying, just in case you haven't seen the review of this previously, which if you haven't, then you can check it out from up here. These filters on the side are removable. And you would think that they actually would be quite restrictive, but it's that really nice kind of nylon mesh. And because of the way it's situated in there, it doesn't really make a great deal of difference. Like I said, I've taken both of these out in testing and it's like a one or two degree difference at best. So moving around to the backside of the PC, and as you can see, it's actually pretty easy to cable manage. I haven't done a particularly immaculate job on this, but it's certainly passable and 
I don't think it looks too disgusting. Now what I've done is I've added a small four port PWM hub for the fans, purely because of the fact that having extra cables everywhere to me is a little bit more of a distraction. Because we've got three up front and there's one in the rear, it just made it a lot easier for me just to connect them all into this hub. And again, I'll put some links in the video description to that hub, so if you want to do a similar sort of thing, you can do. It would have been nice for the addressable RGB hub, which is kind of hidden underneath here. It would have been really good for that to have a PWM function on it as well. I think that really would make things a lot, lot easier. Although again, it does add to the price in a lot of these instances, but these uh, fan splitters, about four or five pounds. So technically you should add that onto the price of your build if that's what you want to do. But most motherboards now will take at least three or four fans, or you could just use a simple two-way splitter if you need those extra headers. But with all this in here, so we've got all of our RGB area, all of our fans, all in this top section. Cabling's come down here. You could actually tuck this right into this front panel if you wanted it a little bit cleaner looking. Um, I've done it purely for demonstration purposes so you can see where the cables are and what you could do with them. The main 24 pin cable, as you can see, tucks in quite nicely there and even with it pushed in, or just even with it loose, there's plenty of room in this back section. So if you do have wires which are a little bit thicker or a little bit more clumsy, then they will fit in very easily. Lots and lots of cable management room here. Punch outs were used for trying to train some of these cables a little bit. And as you can see, I've just tucked this cable in around the side and a couple of cable ties here and there, just to keep the supplementary power for the CPU in one place. The power supply is a modular power supply, but I have actually connected everything to it just to try and see what is left room wise. And even with all the cables on there and all this kind of a little bit untidy down here, you can still get access to the drive cages should you want to put a hard disk drive in there or a couple of extra two and a half inch drives in those plastic molded containers. Plenty of room on this back section for accessing back plates. So if you've got a motherboard and you need to take the back plate off to put a custom cooler on of some sort, this is a really nice open section. Quite often you see these cut off in a weird place kind of here. On, so some boards, especially ASRock boards, which tend to have the CPU mounted slightly further out for some reason, that can be problematic when you're trying to take this heat shield off or the, the mounting bracket off, sorry. But yeah, really nice and open, easy to access. So overall, I'm actually really impressed with it. It's a really nice case, and at the moment with the fans running on their kind of default profile within the Gigabyte software, it's virtually silent. I can barely hear it. You may be able to just about pick it up on the microphone as I'm kind of eight or so inches away from this fan, but it is pretty much super quiet. And with the same deadening properties of the glass on the front, it's just a really, really quiet build. In fact, when I've had it behind me, when I've been filming other videos, it's not one of those things where I've had to be concerned, are the fans going to ramp up? Is it going to become noisy? Is it distracting? And also, I have noticed that there's zero resonation, or is that even a word? Basically, there's no rumbles or rattles. So when the case is running, some cases you find because of the feet on the bottom, or just the way that it's physically built, because the steel's maybe not very thick or something like that, you get that weird resonation, or resonance, I think is the word I'm looking for, which goes through the chassis, and you get these weird noises that just appear and they just drive you mad. Some people don't notice it, but I've got a quite sensitive hearing, so I do pick up on these things. But touch wood, this has been absolutely fine. And even now on this cheap IKEA desk, which is basically hollow, there's no kind of echo or uh, resonance coming through the table. So yeah, depending where you're gonna put it, you haven't got any worries at all. It's not gonna be sending loads of vibrations and things through your desks. So that pretty much wraps up my build in the Sharkoon TG5 Pro. Overall, yeah, very happy. Price-wise, at the moment on amazon.co.uk, we pick these up for about 75 pounds. And with those four fans included, tons of tempered glass and decent filtration, it's in a pretty good position. There are other alternatives. We've obviously got things like the Lian Li case, the Lan Cool, that sort of thing, which are in a very, very similar price bracket. But again, depending what you want out of case and build quality, for me personally, I do believe that the steel construction on this is actually a, a better option. It's a, a more sturdy case, and certainly it is exceptionally rigid, even when you do put a lot of force on it. So it is gonna last you the test of time. So there we go, let me know what you think about it in the comments section below. But in the meantime, I've been Mike, this is Mike's Unboxing Reviews now too, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.